Beasley, Syracuse, and they will kick it off to Duke, so we'll get a chance to see if they can do just that to start this one here today. Nolan Cooney will kick it away inside the Carrier Dome. Waters and Stinson are the deep men for the Blue Devils. Last year, Syracuse rolled to a 49-6 win in Durham. Blue Devils will get the ball first, and there will be no return off the kickoff from Cooney. It's time to take a look at today's impact players, James. They're brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Well, no matter who it is in the backfield for Duke, they've got to continue to run the football. That'll help keep you out there on the field. Durant really runs with authority. And since it's such a big deal to stop it defensively, I'm going to put McKinley Williams. Eyes on you. You've seen the Rhino now on the offensive side of the ball. Watch out for the Bear right there in the middle trying to shut down that run and put pressure on Bryce all day. The Orange 10th in total defense so far this season. They're going to run the ball with Deion Jackson. He is the leading rusher for this Duke team. And that one just short of the 30-yard line of the carry by Jackson. Deion with the two touchdowns last week and the loss against Virginia Tech. Nice pickup of, give me four or five every time and I'll take that all day. On second down, it is Jackson into the secondary, spinning away and up towards midfield here at Ernie Davis Legends Field. The big run from Jackson. Well, timing has been an issue. You hear about timing a lot offensively in the passing game. One thing they've really worked on the last couple weeks is the timing where these backs are lined up behind Bryce when they get that ball because it all works in, in sync in uh, one machine like with that offensive line. They got 15 yards on the previous play at the 40. The catch is made. Dennis Smith with the grab, and the sticks are moving again for Duke. How about this? The sophomore from Gaffney, South Carolina, bringing it right across, and a nice throw right there waiting on him. Good run game will help a quarterback relax just as DeVito. Up the middle, Jackson. Spun down at the 35-yard line. Deion Jackson, the senior from Atlanta, Georgia. James, you mentioned his game last week against Virginia Tech in the loss, 38-31. A couple of rushing TDs. He had 74 yards on the ground against the Jackets. That last game for Duke against the Hokies of Virginia Tech in a loss. This is going to be a loss of yardage for Jackson as he is pulled down. Steve Linton, 17 in orange on the play. Well, Tony White, the new defensive coordinator here of the Orange, he said watch out for Steve Linton, the redshirt freshman, will get quite a bit of action in there today. And there's the young pup, 17 out of Dublin, Georgia, forcing a third down and four. Make a lot of plays today if he can elude. Those just 36% on the season. They're going to get this one near the 25-yard line to Jake Bobo, the junior from Belmont, Massachusetts. Now, Bobo's a big body. They don't have a lot of guys that you're worried about blowing by you, but what they do have are guys in possession-type situations. Go get me a first down, and when you're 6'5", 215 like Bobo, just put it out there, and he'll wall off that defender all day long. Nice-looking drive here for Coach Cutcliffe's offense. He's calling the ball plays now. Bryce throws it down near the goal line and in. Touchdown, Duke. Jalen Calhoun has the catch. It goes for 26 yards, and Duke is on the board first. That's a little bit more like it. Blue Devil fans are thinking back home right now. Wow, that was impressive. And Coach Cut on the phone told us this week we could go up there and light it up. I'm not sure. We're starting to feel better. We're starting to practice better. Well, if the first drive is any indication, look out. The, the lights are on for Chase Bryce in this offense. Impressive opening drive to score first. Charlie Ham for the extra point for the Blue Devils. 26 yards on the pass play. Bryce hits Jalen Calhoun for the touchdown. His fourth TD pass of the season. 
Well, the most consistent playmaker, they call him, Jalen Calhoun, hitting hard like Haystacks Calhoun. Seven to nothing, do. Heading the tone early. First drive, march it down the field. Seven plays, 75 yards. Chase Bryce throws his fourth TD pass of the season as he hits Jalen Calhoun, the sophomore, for the score. Well, the transfer from Clemson throwing strikes on that one. Helped by that run game of Deion Jackson. Some nice holes open by the offensive line. Bryce goes three for three. And about to get our first look at the orange with the ball. Johnson, the deep man at his goal line. Jack Driggers kicks it off for Duke. After that 75-yard scoring drive, there will be no return as that bounces in the end zone. On the kickoff from Driggers. All right, James, time to take a look at today's impact players brought to you by your local Toyota dealer as the Orange goes on offense for the first time today. Their first offensive series coming up. Well, this Syracuse team in the big win at Duke last year, they ran wild, but they also had a couple big hitters through the air. If they're going to hit one today, it's going to be guys like Taj Harris. Watch out for him. And we mentioned off the top of the show, that outstanding defensive line really doesn't got, get much better in college football than 51. Victor Demukeji, the senior from Baltimore, 18 career sacks, leads the ACC in sacks this year. This is his 43rd start. He started every game since arriving at Duke. And what really helps is on that other end, you've got guys like Drew Jordan, Chris Rumpf, so you can't focus on one because the other one will sting you. The focus at quarterback for the Orange on Tommy DeVito. Quick pass out into the flat. Maybe a yard or so. Fight on the play to bring him down. That was Taj Harris. Leonard Johnson, number 33 for Duke as well there, trying to wrestle Harris to the ground. Tom, when you watch this Duke defense, coached by defensive coordinator Matt Guerrero, one thing that stands out, yeah, is that defensive line, but the secondary, they do a really good job of pulling the trigger and stepping up and supporting the run, making open field tackles. We're going to have to today. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 60. It's a five-yard penalty, second down. Mike Roach is our referee as that flag goes against Dino Babers in the orange. Number 60 is Matthew Bergeron on that line for Coach Babers. The orange one and two this year. Got that win a couple of weeks ago against Georgia Tech, 37 to 20. First ever meeting between those two programs in the Dome a couple of weeks ago. And these teams also are not long time ACC rivals, just their Fifth all-time meeting. DeVito down the sideline. It's caught. Taj Harris goes the distance for the orange. DeVito to Harris. And it's in the end zone. 79 yards for Syracuse. Well, it's going to be Leonard Johnson on the coverage. Little play pass and just a beautifully thrown football by DeVito. And Johnson peeks back. When, you, when you've got a receiver, especially a guy with the speed of Taj Harris, and he's got to step on you, there's no peeking. It's, it's, it's do or die. Get that head down and run, and hopefully you can save a touchdown, and it's off to the races. No one's catching Harris. How about that for an answer? Andre Schmidt has the extra point, and we are tied at seven. 79 yards on the connection. DeVito to Taj Harris. Beautiful. Look at him. Number three. Hey, I can pick a key player, can I? That's pretty good. <laughs> Dynamite. With Starbucks Rewards, now any order can be rewarding when you use the app. Touchdown. Third TD pass of the season for DeVito. Third TD catch of the year for Taj Harris. So G 
James, we've only played a few minutes here in this first quarter, and both teams able to score in their first possessions of the ball game. The Cusco 79 yards on the pass. Waters and Stinson will watch it sail into the end zone. All right, time to take a look at today's five-star drive. Summary brought to you by Yellowwood. <laughs> Only two plays. Five stars, but two plays. That's all it took. 75 yards they go. Hey, let's take another look at it real quick while we have a chance. Mention Leonard Johnson, the corner over there on Harris, but circled right there as Waters. Marquise Waters, that's a senior. It's a big playmaker. He gets, for some reason, caught up on the other side of the field. Eyes go to the other side of the field, and it wasn't even like DeVito really froze him and pumped that way. Somebody's got to be there to keep a top on it. Jackson will run it on first down. Yeah, Jackson taken down on the play by Michael Jones, number 13 in orange. Well, I'm a fan of 13 in the orange. Michael Jones, the sophomore from Miami, very young linebacking core. And he's the star of the show. Michael Jones, big playmaker already. Three takeaways this year, two interceptions. And four quarterback hurry, so he's good at putting pressure on the quarterback as well. They'll swing it out to Jackson. Turns up field, bashes his way past the 35-yard line. And a first down for Duke. Deion Jackson, big part of the offense so far for the Blue Devils. Well, and using those hands, Deion was a wide receiver in high school until his senior year. So you got to take advantage of that. Hopefully his hand's okay. He's being looked at over on the sideline. Mateo Durant in to replace him. 13 yards on the play for Jackson. Now Durant. He gets past the 45-yard line up towards midfield. Rob Hanna, who was one of four different orange players a couple of weeks ago to get interceptions, makes the play for Syracuse, and it's second and short. And boy, did Hanna ever answer, Tom. How about that? Remember, Cisco again not playing today. He was injured in pregame before that Georgia Tech game, and the freshman really stepped up. Durant near midfield. And that is enough for a first down on the run by Mateo Durant, the junior from McCormick, South Carolina. And I'll tell you what, the game plan today for Duke is strong, James. Yeah, well, well it's established that run, and you saw it. It was coming back against Virginia Tech. They finally had a little bit of a run game. And boy, does that ever help out a quarterback when that defense has got to respect that run. Chase Bryce. In traffic and a catch at the 40, close to the first down marker. Case in point right here, Tom. Play action pass. The run works, the run works. Now we're going to play action pass you, and we're going to freeze those backers. See the guys underneath, they, they've got to respect that run. It's run first. You've got to stop the run first. They're frozen. If you, you've got a window right across the middle of the field. Easiest throw for a quarterback. Jared Garner made the catch of the previous play as Durant stumbles down after a modest gain. We told you at the top of the broadcast, the numbers for Duke, not where they want them. Total offense, they're averaging 360 yards per game. That is 13th right now in the ACC. They don't look like a team that's 13th in those rankings. Not by any stretch. Little razzle gadget action. This is Pankhol. Trying to turn that corner and he gets upended. Jihad Carter made the play. There is a shaken up orange player and it is Carter. He was in on the tackle of Pankol but is still down on the turf here at Ernie Davis Legends Field. So they'll attend to Jihad Carter. And we'll step aside for just a moment. Come back and check on his condition in a tie game, seven all. So I'm going to hold on promoting you. Carter was the orange player shaken up of the previous play and the catch by Eli Pankol. Well, you're going to see here he comes at the end. He goes low trying to avoid the helmet to helmet, which is smart, but that's got to smart. He gets kneed right in the helmet. And hopefully it's a stinger of sorts and you know the way they're, they're holding that arm a lot of times you, you get that head in an awkward position and that whole side of the your whole arm goes numb so they'll take him in the tent and hopefully he'll be out and, and ready to play because this is a defense that's that's gotten banged up quite a bit we mentioned Cisco 
and but it's guys that are just stepping in. Tony White has done an excellent job of, of cross-training these defenders, this very young defense, to play a lot of spots. Learn to play a lot of spots so you're, you're ready to go. There's one guy, a great example, in Rob Hannon. Let's see what White in this defense has. On a big third down and four. So Nuzdio comes in in that secondary for the Orange to replace Carter, who had his first career interception against Georgia Tech a couple of weeks ago for the Orange. This is third and four for Duke. They'll try to run it up the middle with Durant. He's going to be short by at least a couple of yards. They need it to get to the 29-yard line. They're keeping him out there. They're over the ball in a hurry as well. Just don't jump off sides defensively. Go on the movement of that ball and give him a freebie. Four of eight. The fourth down situations this season for the Blue Devils, and they won't get this one as the pass is incomplete. Looking for Pankhole, incomplete, and the Orange take over on downs. You got to have it. You got to have it, Chase Price. There are a lot of things maybe that, that, that are tough for you to adapt coming in on the fly and learn everything on Zoom, but this is an out route. You're on the fly. Your guy's wide open. That's a right, right nice route. And you just got to take the time and, and put it out there for him. Give him a chance to catch it. Statistically, Duke is now 0 for 5 on fourth down attempts away from Durham. They're perfect in Durham 4 for 4. They don't get that one, and DeVito hands it off. Up the middle, trying to bounce it outside. That's Sean Tucker. Number 34 in orange, as we mentioned, James will, James will be the answer to that trivia question. Who scored the first points in the newly renovated dome? And it was Tucker on the run. Yeah, and it, it puts some juice in that offensive line as well. Look at him. He, he, firing off the football. They were much maligned early on. They, they seem to have gelled a little bit in that Georgia Tech game. And the back running hard behind you will certainly help. DeVito's in trouble, and he's taken down. Dragged down by Tangelo. So we've talked about Demu Keiji and Rumpf, of course. Jordan, wow, great job by Tangelo. Refusing to get cut. You see him go down and put that hand down. It, those big guys, it's so tough for them to bend. And, and when someone cuts your feet, it, a lot of times you can chop them down. Tangelo, an excellent play. Very athletic to make that set. Loss of five on the play. DeVito tries the other sideline. It's a little bit too far for Anthony Quigley, number 14. That play had a similar look to it to the one that went for 79 yards to Taj Harris on the opposite sideline as Lewis and Waters were back there defensively for Duke James. So Cooney's into punt for Coach Babers. With just under seven minutes to go in our first quarter. Robertson deep for Duke. Maybe that scoreboard was going to come into play. <laughs> if it does hit the scoreboard, they re-kick it. That's, that's the ruling on that with that beautiful new scoreboard they have here in the Carrier Dome. So they'll mark it at the 33-yard line. That's part of all the improvements made to this Carrier Dome. Multi-million dollar upgrades and improvements. By the way, it's 165 feet from the very top of the roof there, James, all the way down to Ernie Davis Legends Field. Big money put into this building. That roof now fixed. The previous roof was on an air pressure system. And there's six million tons of steel truss on top of the dome. It's an architectural marvel. Durant is the back. Instead, Bryce puts a little touch on this one as he sails into the orange bench. He was looking for Dennis Smith, number 14. Garrett Williams back there for the orange. Williams getting physical. If those receivers are going to line up tight on that sideline, go ahead and force them out of bounds. And probably a smart decision by Bryce to throw it where nobody can get it. Here's your second and ten. Tied at seven in the first quarter. Durant. A couple of shifty moves by Durant right up the middle of the field. Mateo 
Durant had one person to get by, and he gets tackled near the 20. Durant on the run for Duke. You know, I don't love a 1-2 quarterback rotation system, but I absolutely love a running back rotation when you've got one like you have here at Duke between Deion Jackson and Mateo Durant. Watch the big guys up front. Big bodies are going to get up and pull. And open that hall quick, quick with the snap, Duke. You got the defense on, your, on their heels. They try to hit him with something. Here's one more look at it. You know, patience, patience, eyes, vision. Vision not only to, to see that hole and the patience to wait for it, but then next level vision. And then this is what I like most about Mateo Durant. He's always looking to punish someone at the end of a run. 48 yards on that pickup right there. And you're right back to Jackson. You let the other one go over on the sidelines and get hungry. And they just feed off of one another, it seems, when they get rolling. Throw on the run by Chase Price is through the hands of the receiver, number five, Jalen Calhoun, who has the touchdown catch for Duke. A couple of these out throws by Bryce. He, he started clean. It was his drop back type of action early in the game and hit three strikes, but a couple times rolling out, trying to hit those out routes. He's been off the mark a little bit. That one thrown behind the receiver. So here's a third down and nine there. And Duke has just entered the CPI security red zone. One for two on third down of the game. Bryce had the time over, shot the receiver, and it was a near interception. Calhoun was the receiver, and Trill Williams had a chance to pick it off. Oh, wow. Get, uh, robbed of a show here at football fans because anytime Trill Williams gets the ball in his hands, it's off to the races. He had the touchdown after the pitch by Hannah last week at the end of last year and ran back the would-be two-point conversion against Wake Forest to seal the deal. Got 36, to that one. Yep, 36 yards away for Charlie Hamm. He's only missed once so far this season. And Ham able to knock it through. So the Blue Devils get points out of that drive and take a 10-7 lead on the field goal from Charlie Ham, the red shirt freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. Let's check in with Abby Labar. Well, guys, you were talking about this beautifully newly renovated dome, and from down here, I can tell you it's everything and more. What stands out to me is the lighting and sound system. It's truly state-of-the-art. What's really cool is they're dimming the lights, and they're adding all sorts of cool LED colors to the rooftop. It's really a collegiate football experience unlike any other. Guys, I wish you were down here experiencing it with me. I know when there's about 40,000, 50,000 fans in here, it's going to be unique, that's for sure. Absolutely, Abby. And you know what? It, that's what I love about the Dome is we may not be down there on the field with you, but we're pretty close. <laughs> the, the press box here in the Carrier Dome, even before the renovations, uh, very close to the playing field. It, it, it makes it fun for a broadcast team. But, yeah, we, we've been impressed as well. So Nike Johnson, the deep man, thinking about it. One yard deep. Johnson. Angles to the left, got away from a would-be tackler, and then just beyond the 25-yard line for Johnson as Robertson made the tackle. ACC football is presented by CPI Security. It's the fifth all-time meeting between Duke and Syracuse. Last season, the game was played at Duke and Durham, 49-6. The win for the Orange, they ran for 286 yards in that winning effort. Mo Neal and Jarvie and Howard both ran for 115 yards in the winning effort for the Orange a season ago. Here's the new featured back for Syracuse and Sean Tucker. Tucker with runs of 38 and 4 for touchdowns two weeks ago against Georgia Tech. Carter the safety in there on the stop, but that's that, that's a little too late if you're a Duke Blue Devil giving up five, six yards a carry on first down. It sure opens up the playbook offensively. DeVito. 
That pass is incomplete near the 35, and a flag is out. Looking for Luke Benson. Penalty marker on the field. Boy, Benson, <laughs> he's not a receiver. That's he's a big tight end. Defense, number 26. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Running like a receiver. He's very good out in the open field. Remember last year he had a 70-yard 70, 70 touchdown reception against Holy Cross, and Carter's all over him. He's just grabbing on him and right there in front of the officials, so he gets the flag. Even with that flag, Carter holding on to one arm. Benson almost pulls it in with the other one. Still, the damage is done via the flag. Georgia Tech, remember, they helped Syracuse quite a bit with all of their flags, all of their penalties as well. And the penalties crept into this Duke football team last week and were a big factor in their loss to Virginia Tech. DeVito gets rid of it. To the sideline for Harris. Tried to make a twisting grab. That pass incomplete. The play to Benson, James. Benson coming into the game had one catch for one yard in the three previous games. So Syracuse trying to spread it around through the air for Tommy DeVito. Well, Tom, whether it's Syracuse with Benson and Hackett, their tight ends, or for Duke, you got Gray. Gray's a great tight end. We should see a lot of activity from these tight ends every single game. And at times, they get a little bit quiet. You can't forget about him. Here's the big man right here, bottom of your screen. DeVito used seven different receivers against Georgia Tech. This is incomplete. And that's an Anthony Queeley. Maybe a little too much mustard on it. And Queeley unable to come down with it. Well, it's, it's a nice play. He hangs on to this football. It's coming in there high and hard. Got to pull that one down because not only did he have some space, but he had some bodies out there to lead the way. So a third down in 10 now. Let's see if Matt Guerrero and this defense, let's see what they bring. Four. DeVito. That pass off the mark. He was looking for Nikeem Johnson, number four. So that brings up fourth down for Syracuse. There's a look out there. Johnson up top the corner. Got turned around. Not really sure who that ball was intended for as it landed in between two Syracuse receivers. Falls to the turf and they have to play another series. Syracuse will now punt it away. Cooney punts to Robertson. Fields it at the 11. For a fair catch. 41-yard punt from Nolan Cooney. And we told you Duke was trying to improve on those offensive statistics through four games and still searching for that first win. They were last in the conference in scoring, James, just over 17 points per game. They've got the 10-7 lead in the first quarter. Right, here's what they've done today. They, they've kept, you saw their last giving up the sacks, and they kept Chase Bryce clean. They've kept him up. David Cutcliffe, the new offensive coordinator here this year, calling ball plays offensively for the first time since 2007 at the University of Tennessee. Jackson. Jackson runs away from the Orange D. Up near midfield for Jackson. And finally tripped up near the 40 of Syracuse. 50 yards on the run for Deion Jackson. There have been a few plays here defensively. This, this young linebacking crew that we've talked so much about, they've been non-existent. And these running backs have made it through that first wave. The, the offensive line opening up a hole for them, and it's off to the races. This time it's Jackson with the big hitter right up the middle. Uh -oh. Going to be Jackson again, but he fumbled. Syracuse recovers. Number 19, Rob Hanna falls on it as the ball popped out of the grasp of Deion Jackson. Hanna is turning into a turnover machine. Excellent job there by Canton Arku. The sophomore, the Canadian, putting his hat right on the pigskin and popping it loose. And Hanna, the freshman from Miami, 
falling on it. Remember pregame two weeks ago, Georgia Tech? Hey, Cisco's down. You're starting today. And he puts on a show with a big interception. DeVito's pass is incomplete. After the 11th takeaway of the season by that orange defense, they came into the game second best in the football bowl subdivision. There you go. Tony White, the defensive coordinator. Ten consecutive games. He's been a part of this year with that, but going back into last year and leading the ACC seven interceptions, they already get that fumble recovery. Tro Williams had a chance at interception number eight just a few moments ago, had it slipped through his fingers. Orange getting the ball back on the fumble. Sean Tucker on the run. Rocky Shelton, the second, number 43, the sophomore defensively for the Blue Devils. Big sudden change here for the defense. They've had to be curveball hitters and get out there and play defense. Sudden change moments all year. Can they get off the field here? DeVito wants to throw it. Just nine yards rushing, and he has to scamper out of bounds beyond the 35-yard line for Tommy DeVito. Forced out by Rocky Shelton. That graphic was staggering. Duke dominating the run game here in the first quarter, James. Well, and Tom here, the, the defense gets out there, and they do their job. They're getting used to that, unfortunately. Sitting over there trying to sip on some water and get some air. And the turnover forces them right out there, but they force a three and out. Syracuse unable to do anything with the fumble recovery. Robertson backtracking. Let's it bounce there the 15 towards the goal line, and it'll go in. 62 yards on the punt from Cooney as it went into the end zone. Excellent hustle by Isaiah Jones. The sophomore out of Cocoa, Florida, almost got down there and got a piece of it before it went into the paint. Two thirty-eight to go in our first quarter. Chase Bryce and the Blue Devils points on two of their three drives here in this first quarter. The Bryce TD of 26 yards to Jalen Calhoun and a field goal from Charlie Ham. Durant the back. Bryce. Throws it to Dino Babers, incomplete. Coach Babers went for the one-handed grab. Well, we've seen him. He's got pretty good hands. We've seen him catch a couple of them like that. Coach Cutton, Coach Babers, a lot of respect for one another. Nothing but great things to say about one another, but boy, do they need, each of them need to beat the other one here this afternoon. Only meeting in the dome between the teams, 2014, and a win on the road for Duke as Bryce will tuck and run short of the 30-yard line. Sure looked to be a design play. Bryce getting him up there on a third down and short. And they'll bring in big Noah Gray, who's going to line up split up top. Big buddy, the big body of him and Bobo as well against those smaller defensive backs. Five receivers set on third down for Bryce. Throws this one too high. Jake Bobo couldn't connect with him. Melifonwu back there defensively. And Coach Cutler's team is going to have to punt on fourth down. You've got to give your receiver a chance. You know, talk about the big body of, of Gray or Bobo. Put it on there. Put it on that back shoulder where that big body's going to wall off the defender. He either catches it or nobody catches it, but nobody catches that one when it's too high and hard. We've seen too much of that. Wilson the punt. Mm. Not much on the return. That was Johnson. With a sophomore, Shaka Hayward, getting down there in a hurry. This punt cover team for Duke has been fantastic. Had a fumble recovery last week. As you take a look at the numbers for Dino Babers, since 2018 here, home sweet home, 1-0, of course, this season, their only win of the year. 
But a nice job covering there, Tom, by the sophomore linebacker who's leading this team. But boy, do they have some big shoes to fill at that linebacker spot, most notably Kobe Kwanzaa, who had 105 tackles last year. Tucker on the handoff. Short gain for Tucker. The Orange in 2019, James, they went three and three inside the dome. 2018, they were undefeated, six and zero. Oh. And that season ended with the Camping World Bowl victory against West Virginia, 34-18 in Orlando, Florida. Just 14 yards on the ground for the Orange. They do have that 79-yard touchdown pass from DeVito to Harris in this first quarter. Trying something on the edge. The play does not develop to the Orange liking, and Tucker is tackled. Well, you mentioned Hayward on the punt cover. This time it's Rocky Shelton. Get out there and, and shut that corner down as they run that option into the short side of the field. Helton shuts it down, and a good job by Fry and company to go and make sure it's down. Let's see if Duke can get another three and out. 0 for 3 on third down for the Orange. This pass incomplete near the 40. DeVito had a receiver there. Well, it's the freshman, Courtney Jackson. And not only is his receiver there, but the ball is there. There's only one ball to go around. You, get, you got it. When you get your chance, you got to prove that you can step up and hang on to that ball. And, and that was an issue by these receivers for Syracuse. The struggles early on in the year, there were too many drops. You can't make a habit of that. Robertson. Got by one man. And now tackled near the 20 for Duke. Chase Bryce. The Clemson transfer, and they needed him. When they played the Orange a couple of years ago, Trevor Lawrence was injured, and in comes Bryce to save the day for Clemson. Well, how about it? He goes 7 to 13 on that day. No touchdowns, the one interception, but you know what? He got in there and spread the ball around to all that talent on the football field, and the defense did enough to make sure that they could hang on in a very close one, 27 to 23, the final for then number one Clemson. And well, the big dogs in the ACC have a big game tonight against the Miami Hurricanes, his old school. Rice to throw it. And that was behind the receiver Jackson, who has 90 yards rushing so far in this first quarter. And now 29 seconds to go in our first. Misfired on his last seven attempts. Yeah, but that three of three on that opening drive looked like it was a, a brand new look. Abby talked about it off the top. What a great week of practice he had had. The run game is certainly helping him here today as they have just dominated. That offensive line is, is really having some fun. They've taken the pop to this defense up front. Duke came into the game 10th in rushing offense, averaging 150 yards per game. They're up over 160 yards in this first quarter. Third and seven. One for four on third down. Here comes Bryce out of the pocket. He's got the first down. Past the 35-yard line on what will be the final play of our first quarter. Chase Bryce on the run. He got 10 yards and a first down for Duke. So a big rushing first quarter for the Blue Devils. Bryce with a passing TD, but the 79-yard connection, DeVito to Harris, 10-7 after once. Well, there you have it, Duke on top. And Bryce, the five of 12, and we just put up the stat there towards the end of the first quarter, started five of five, but he's gone cold since then. But a big pickup to end the first quarter with his legs for a first down. Jackson spun away from the first contact. Short of the 40 for Deion Jackson. Had a huge first quarter. Ran for 94 yards. He's on his way to 2,000. If he can get 173 in this game, he'll get to that plateau. Seems like a lot, but he's already knocked out 94 plus that previous run. Had a 50-yard run, the longest rush for Duke this season. Pressure coming from the backside of the balls on the turf. It's picked up, running to the end zone. Kenton Arku, and he takes it in for the orange for the touchdown. Twenty-seven.
seven yards on the return for the score. Boy, this team, it's like sharks smelling blood in the water with those turnovers. Ask Tony White if they've been going after the football in practice here this week. He, last couple weeks, he said, absolutely. One of the best teams of turning it over in the nation. Cam Jonas. On the field is a touchdown after the play. Syracuse has been giving its first sideline warning of the game. Ah, let them celebrate and have some fun. They're taking up the whole sideline there. Somebody's got to enjoy it. Kenton Arku picking it up. But it was Cam Jonas delivering the pop. Has to have been a miscommunication in the backfield. Perhaps Deion Jackson, rather than running that route, should have been there to help clean things up. So the extra point is good. What a turn of events for the Orange. Jeff Canton Arku and Chase Bryce never saw that pressure coming from the backside. Well, something's got to give in this one. A team that has had so much trouble turning the football over against a defense that creates nothing but turnovers and points as well. Did you know that every single flush flings odors onto you? 1410 Syracuse. I can't do it. I can't ever go there. I'm always going to the dinosaur <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Both very fine choices. All right. Great to be back on campus with James Bakes and Abby Labar joining us down on the sidelines. Yeah, Labar, she went to Dinosaur Barbecue last night on her own. So here's the play, James, to knock this ball loose in the return. Uh, Jonas does a good job, too, of just making sure it's a clean hit. You can see there in the back, you read the lips. The youngsters, it, it, it looked like, oh, my God, but I think it's just OMG. That's what they say now is OMG kids these days. So a new guy there to take the snaps. Holmberg is in for Duke. He'll hand this one off. Well, that run game certainly has been there throughout the day for these quarterbacks. And Gunnar Holmberg, 6'3", 205, from Wake Forest, North Carolina, Heritage High School. See if he can get something going through the air. It was a nice start for Bryce, but all downhill after that first five completions, really. Holmberg trying to run it. Past the 30-yard line, seeing his first action of the season. Ran into Rob Hanna, number 19 in orange. There's a shot of home there, pre-mustache, and gets him up there near the, the sticks so a third down and short. It would be a big one right here. For David Cutcliffe's offense. Third and three. Up the middle near the 35-yard line. And that is going to be enough for a first down. Mateo Durant picks it up for Duke. Well, a tough spot defensively on that call. You, you know you've got a quarterback in there who... He didn't start this game for a reason. As you know, not sure what you're going to get throwing the football. And yet running the football seems a little bit hard right there. But when you got a Durant, hard charging. Keep feeding him. Holmberg. 40-yard line. Tackle down by Trill Williams. David Cutcliffe going to Holmberg here in the second quarter. We had on our two deep, Chris Katrinick as that backup spot who backed up Quentin Harris last year. It's a player down for the Orange. And they'll attend to Canton Arku. He had that touchdown return on the fumble. He is down on the turf here in Syracuse. To be honest, a little dust, it never bothered me until I found out what it actually was. Dust, my Liberty Flames at noon. The team they defeated a season ago. And that's followed by Duke taking on intrastate rival NC State at 3.30. You want to check your local listings and don't miss a single play of our ACC football doubleheader.
James and I will be in Raleigh. And by the way, they're at Virginia today, NC State. They're leading 24-0 late in the second quarter. There's Chase Bryce, who was the starter today for Duke on the sideline right now, James. Also saw another school in the ACC, Virginia Tech. And North Carolina going at North Carolina up big on Virginia Tech. But you got to think, we just saw that shot over there of Chase Bryce. So much time and energy has been put into trying to get that new quarterback into a rhythm, into a flow with this offense, with these backs, with the receivers, offensive linemen. How many reps have these backups really gotten with the first team receivers, especially? Holmberg wants to run it again. Duke has had incredible success on the ground. Coming into this game, they averaged about three yards per rush. Their average today, James, is over eight yards per rush for the Blue Devils, and they're up to 187 total yards on the ground. Here's third and three. Yeah, but again, like we talked about earlier, Syracuse, earlier this season, they, they couldn't run the football. People didn't fear the run. Eventually, you get to a spot where a defensive coordinator or defense doesn't fear the pass, and they can just key on those runs and shut it all down with an extra man. That pass is caught, and up towards midfield, Jalen Calhoun appeared to adjust ever so slightly to the pass from Holmberg, and it's good enough for a first down into Orange territory. Jones made the tackle. Huge, huge, similar situation as earlier on this drive with Holmberg as the quarterback. They run it, and they convert. Here, they show a run, open up that middle again, and a nice connection. Good job by Calhoun. To hold on to it. 14 yards on the first completion of his career for Holmberg. He'll give it off to Durant. And Durant to about the 44-yard line. Big Josh Black. And that interception against Georgia Tech. One of many against Jeff Sims. Jeff Sims had quite a night against that Louisville defense last night, though, in the big win in Atlanta for Jeff Collins in the Yellow Jackets. 46 to 27, a home win against Louisville for Georgia Tech. And is that ball on the turf? Syracuse thinks it has it. Trying to move some bodies around and see what the situation is at about that 46 yard line. And it is orange football. Durant fumbled, he was hit by McKinley Williams, ball on the turf, and the orange has it. Cody Roscoe comes out of there with it, number 97 for the Cuse. A lot of pats on the back for 97 and slapping Big Bear on the back as well. Zero, look at McKinley, split that double team and it was the handoff or lack thereof to the back. Holmberg not sure, and again, those are those reps that don't know. No one can go to practice right now. That's, that's not part of the team, but, but you got to think there weren't too many of them as they're trying hard to get that tempo with Chase Bryce in the backs. Costly, costly. Tucker hits his man at the 50. Duke now, James, in its last three-plus games, 16 turnovers. And coming into the game, those turnovers had cost Duke 34 points by the opposition. Three fumble recoveries in the game for the Orange. That's now 13 takeaways for the Orange defense. They'll swing it out to Tucker. Duke side of the 50. Tap dances down that sideline and inside the 25-yard line. Sean Tucker. Boy, a good job. Nice and patient for DeVito. Swing it out there and almost like a, a sweep to get everybody out there and outrun the linebackers giving chase and an excellent job by Taj Harris blocking way downfield forever. This was a direct snap to Tucker who got 27 on the last play on the pass from DeVito. He took the direct snap on that first down play. 9.40 and counting in our second quarter. Sean Tucker emerging as the feature back for the Orange after his performance against Georgia Tech. Now Harris will walk to the sidelines. Number three in Orange. Well, hopefully he's okay. He got it all started. That 79-yard touchdown reception. 
second offensive play of the game for Tommy DeVito in this Cuse offense. DeVito, three of nine, 107 yards. This is a handoff up the middle. Nate Thompson on the tackle of Tucker. Look, just the pad level. Getting lost. You know, he's not a super tall guy, not a really big guy. But the pad level that Sean Tucker, the freshman, runs with is what's impressive, powerful. And, and he's one of those guys, he, he's going to get hit and he's going to gain a couple more. Tucker trying to get near that first down marker at the 12. Maybe a little bit short. He ran into Shaka Hayward. Tucker, who ran for 112 yards, James, against Georgia Tech. First freshman to run for 100 or more yards against an FBS opponent since 08. Now they're trying to get that first down. It's going to be very close, but if they mark it where the officials have come in, that's going to be short of the 12. Well, I think so. I mean, you know, there's a lot of bonuses to getting up there in a hurry and snapping that football. The defense wasn't all the way set as they were scrambling trying to get into position. But at the same time, when your guys aren't quite ready and you come up empty, you can't get that push. How about that? So nothing to show for it again after the big turnover. And once again, David Cutcliffe's defense, Matt Guerrero, the defensive coordinator, sends his guys out there, sudden change situation, and they respond, and they answer, and they have done that. As you mentioned, all those turnovers this season, Tom, time and time and time again. But what happens is, in that second half, they just get gassed, and they don't have any gas left, left in the tank, so they can't hang. They've had leads in a few games in the third quarter, but they've lost the lead, and this is good to see Chase Bryce back out there after catching his breath after the big pop, and we'll see if he can get anything going now. Jackson stumbled near the 15-yard line for Deion Jackson, the senior. Chase Bryce is 5 of 12 for 68 yards and one TD. That to Jalen Calhoun. You, know, you got to wonder, too, Tom, when you go five of five, you come out slinging it and hitting all your guys, and then you, you miss your next seven. A lot of these, these coaches, they script their first 15, 20 plays, and so you know exactly what you're going to get, and you can visualize it. And then when things get, get all jumbled, it's different play call, different defenses. You almost think that, that maybe he's getting a little bit lost here, too much to think about. Bryce to throw, the receiver fell down, and a yellow penalty marker is out. Bobo was the receiver for Duke, he took a tumble. Pass interference, defense number two, 15 yard penalty automatic, first down. Well, any way they can, they'll take it. Melifon Wu. Good corner, and you know what? He's just, he's too far inside. He's fallen for the inside cut. He was going to be beat, so he just perhaps saved a touchdown right there. Reaches out and grabs him. Probably the best thing to do. Fatu Melafanwu, the junior from South Grafton, Massachusetts. Flagged for the infraction. And just over eight minutes to go in our second quarter. We'll run it with Jackson. Patience, hesitation, past the 40. Jackson will grease the chains and move them for the Blue Devils. McKinley Williams and Trill Williams had to combine on the stop of Jackson, and he ran it for 14 yards. Well said, partner. You talk about patience. You, you got to be patient. You can't get up there too fast. Let those big guys clear it out. You saw them there pulling and just clearing the way, but a back that doesn't have patience is going to run himself up into trouble. Bryce let it go right before contact and incomplete. Looking down the field for Noah Gray, number 87. So James, despite that incompletion, how about what Deion Jackson is doing for his head coach? 12 carries, 114 yards in the game as we play in the second quarter for Deion Jackson in that offense for David Cutcliffe. Well, and you, and you get more of the same when you get number 21 in there, Mateo Durant as well. It's a great one-two punch. That passing game can, can just do a little bit. It would be scary what this offense could do. Bryce on the money to Bobo. 
Falls forward past the 45-yard line. That's another first down for Duke. Melafonwu took down Bobo. Well, and that had to feel good for Chase Bryce in this Duke offense. If I'm not mistaken, that was nine straight incompletions since the 5-for-5 five five start. Let's see if he can back it up. Jackson. Near the 40. Deion Jackson, the senior whose mom was an All-American trackster at Miami. His dad was a running back at the Citadel. Dad carried the ball for 1,346 yards in his career. There's Durant back there to replace him now behind Bryce. Durant puts the shoulder down and gets inside the 35. Duke is up over 200 yards rushing as a team. Kenton Arku with the tackle for the Orange. So statistically, David Cutcliffe has to like what he's seen so far. 209 yards on the ground in his first half for Duke. Bryce over the middle. Could have been intercepted there into traffic. Michael Jones was there for the Orange. Jared Garner was the intended receiver. Well, the Orange defense with three turnovers. There you're going to see Jones in the middle already. But, Tom, they've dropped two interceptions. Could have, should have four or five. Great job dropping into that zone and just reading those eyes. Michael Jones, he's a playmaker. Always around that football. Kind of like the young Rob Hanna in this safety that's been filling in for Cisco. Durant. Canton Arku on the tackle, number 31. He has the fumble return touchdown of 28 yards in this quarter to put the orange in front, 14-10. Sophomore from Quebec, Canada. And now it's third and six. 540 and rolling on the clock in the dome. Four for seven on third down for Bryce. Throws it through the 25-yard line, and the ball is bouncing on the turf. Could not connect with Daryl Harding Jr. Fourth down for Duke. Here comes Charlie Ham in the field goal unit. Just wearing out the, the numbers running that football, but still down four, trying to cut it to one. So Charlie Ham in there for the field goal attempt. Snap was a little bit low. Ham got hit and flags are out. The kick was no good. But 14 Garrett Williams was in there and Ham went down and is shaken up on the play. And there are penalty markers. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. 14 of the receiving team. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. And that's Garrett Williams. He's gonna come from the top of your screen. And goes right for that spot. It's, you know, it's, it's a sell job by Ham. Hamming it up, if you will. But that's what you're supposed to do, and it's just a, a good effort. It, it, you hate to see that for a guy hustling and going to the spot. That's, that's how he's taught. You just get, you just got to make sure you, you can't get anywhere near tangled up with those kickers because they've got to protect those defenseless players and a kick that wasn't even close. Now you give him another chance, fresh set of downs inside the red zone. So rather than trying to cut it to one, now there's another chance and a chance to take the lead for Duke. Bryce threw for 271 yards in the loss against Virginia Tech at home by seven a week ago. Now he throws this over the middle, deflected and incomplete. Jalen Calhoun was the target. Trill Williams, number six for the orange. 
you got to – who wants it more? I mean, who wants this football more right here? The ball's thrown up there. You've got the inside leverage, Eli Panko. But Trill Williams wanted it more. You got to go up and attack that football. You got to go high point the football and go back and meet it. Help your quarterback out. Second and ten for the 15. This is Durant up the middle trying to drag the orange to the end zone. And Durant just short of the goal line. Mateo Durant to the one yard line. 14 yards on the rush by Durant. Short of the goal line. It'll be first down and goal. Wow, look at the bodies down on the ground up front. This offensive line is doing a really good job. So Cam Jonas was there for the tackle, which initially was ruled. Previous play is under further review. That Durant was down at the one. The play is under review by announcement from our referee this afternoon, Mike Roach. So right up the middle, James, for Durant. Does the knee touch? Well, the knee absolutely doesn't. But what they're looking at is, is they're looking at. So, James, they're going to keep looking at it. The review is on. Right now, the ball is at the one for Duke and trailing 14-10. It's time for a crash course in fast play. What do you do? Try to make the tackle. Well, the, the elbow makes you down, but, but the ruling is that the ball was across the plane as his elbow hit. So Ham in for the extra point. And there was enough indisputable video evidence to overturn that call. So Mateo Durant with the touchdown run. If you're just joining us, well, Duke just took it in the end zone a second ago with Mateo Durant. But here's a look back at what happened so far. And first, it's Calhoun on the touchdown catch from Chase Bryce. Yeah, you're just joining us. Where you been, exactly. man? Exactly. You missed this 79-yard <laughs> touchdown pass from DeVito to Taj Harris as well to make it 7-7. Seven to seven. And then it was a Charlie Ham field goal for Duke. Ham just moments ago missed a field goal, but was rough. So it was a fresh set of downs. Big pops defensively. The Orange continue to turn the football over. There's the big hit on the blitz by Cam Jonas. Canton Arcu returning it for the touchdown. We saw a different quarterback for Duke, but the same old thing on the ground running the football. Both Durant and Deion Jackson have been fantastic here today. And there's a look at that scoring drive, 11 plays, and a drive that saw Chase Bryce come back in. And there you see in the first four games, 408 mentioned against Virginia Tech, the running game started to come on a little bit. It's really coming on today, 233, and there's 509 left in the first half. Blue Devils had only averaged 102 yards per game on the ground prior to today. They now have 233, as you just saw, by contrast. And now a message from our friends at Bojangles. Feed the whole family with a big bow box. It's bow time. 17-14, Duke has taken the lead. Mateo Durant with his second rushing touchdown of the season. And so the one-two punch of Durant and Deion Jackson tough to handle for the Syracuse defense as Tommy DeVito leads them out there, trailing 17-14 and trailing in total yardage as well. Dukes rolled up 325 yards of total offense. That was Nikeem Johnson lined up in the backfield. DeVito trying to get away from pressure. Tucker can't handle the pass. Tom, there was a flag down what appeared to be an illegal motion type of penalty, but another one that came late. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal motion, offense number four, holding defense number 26. As fouls will offset, we'll replay first down. So there's Johnson, and, and as you saw the incomplete pass at what Sean Tucker was in the game, but lined up as a wideout. He actually went forward. <laughs> Two coaches over there on the sidelines making sure that everybody saw it. 
And then the hold was on Carter in the secondary. Michael Carter, captain. The strike safety on this team. Rubino just fires that one incomplete. Taj Harris was the closest receiver, but realistically, not a whole lot of orange jerseys around that one. Nice job of coverage there in the secondary by Duke. And, you know, we, we've, we've talked a lot about the struggles with Chase Bryce in, in the offense for Duke, but not exactly lighting it on fire since the Taj Harris touchdown second snap of the game offensively for them. DeVito just three of ten through the air has to buy some time and can only go out of bounds. Four stop by Rocky Shelton. Well, and Tom, it looked like it was going to be a rocky afternoon for this secondary coverage-wise early on. They're trying to pick on them a little bit, but hey, they do an excellent job here. You're asked to cover, not just for the initial few seconds, but the blitz is going to come. you got to stay on those guys, and nobody leaving their man and giving DeVito an opportunity to burn you. Forced out of bounds and forcing a third down and 13. They'll bring three on this rush. 0 for 5 on third down. DeVito has no choice but to try to run up to the 25 and go down. He's back to the original line of scrimmage. And, and that can't happen. I mean, you, you bring three guys defensively, and your quarterback is in trouble immediately. You've got to do a better job of, of protecting your quarterback with a three-man rush or a four-man rush, for that matter. No blitzers. Everybody's dropped into, into the zone. And a good job defensively after the touchdown to get right back out there and help their offense get the ball back. And now 0 for 6 on third down of the game for the Orange. And the punt from Cooney. Robertson backtracking inside the 20. Nowhere to go. To about the 18 for Robertson. Duke has the lead. 17-14 inside the dome after the 58-yard punt. Inside of four minutes to go in our second quarter from Syracuse, New York, and the Carrier Dome. With Starbucks Rewards, now any... ...you by ZMAX Micro Lubricant, available at Walmart. I'll tell you what, that Duke running offense... Get a little Z-Max micro lubricant going on there. They are lubed up. Lubed up and ready to roll. James, 233 yards on the ground for a team averaging just 102 on the ground coming in to this game here inside the Dome. And maybe a little bit of confidence after he, he looked, didn't look like it was an injury situation. Chase Price giving way to Holmberg. Came back out there, so we little bit of feel good and maybe we'll see right here there are those rushing numbers again this season 408 so far today 233 it's been the one-two punch of Jackson and Durant it's Deion Jackson back behind Chase Bryce right now with 334 left to play in this first half trying to add to this lead how about that the Syracuse offense on the other hand it was just all first drive really Pankle. Eli Pankle on the catch, Linton on the tackle. Latter stages, second quarter. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Abby Labar, and our outstanding ACC college football production crew with you from the Carrier Dome. Deion Jackson, James, is making himself right at home inside the Dome so far this afternoon. Well, and setting the table for him are those big guys up front, blowing guys like Cody Roscoe off of the football. We, we talked about... Syracuse takes its first time out of the half. Talked about Duke and the troubles they've had defensively of, of just being gas, being out there too much. You're starting to see it with this defense. It's one thing getting bullied around front seven, but another thing is just demoralizing when a team runs right down your throat like that. James, how about last season? That was a game that was owned by the Orange, and they played in Durham. 
And all the heat and the fireworks belong to the Orange and Tommy DeVito. They won it 49 to 6. Spent a lot of time in the end zone at Wallace Wade Stadium. Almost 300 rushing yards for DeVito and Syracuse. Defense getting in on the action as well. But now, running things today so far in the first half anyway, is David Cutcliffe's team on the ground. Syracuse had two rushers go over 100 yards in Moniel and Jarvian Howard. Well, today, for Duke, it's Deion Jackson over 100 yards rushing in the first half. First time since 2018. Duke had a player do that, and that was Daniel Jones, and he's playing on Sundays now. That's Jackson again. Wow, it may be a second effort. Here is going to move these chains. Looked like he was stoned before the sticks. That's three of their last four, James, converted on third down for Duke. Huge. What did we talk about? Get greedy. Stay on the field. Keep that football. Keep those drives alive. Even if they don't always end in points, stay out there. Don't give them freebies. And they're just putting together drives now. Bryce just throws that one away to stop the clock at 2.33 here in the second quarter. David Cutcliffe, just the third time ever he's been in the Dome as a head coach, and this is a guy with over 45 years of coaching experience. He brought the Tennessee balls up here as an offensive He did. 98. And they won by a single point in that game, and they've got another first down past the 40. Jared Garner, number 24. Garner's a good-looking receiver. Big guy as well. Big target for Chase Bryce in 98. That was the year the Tennessee Vols actually won a national championship after that, that close one here. And they beat Florida State in the Fiesta Bowl in the first-ever BCS national championship game. Complete to Harding Jr. Rhythm, rhythm has meant so much, and lack thereof has meant so much to the inabilities of this offense here this year. They just desperately would like to have a little bit of this rhythm, stay with them for a while. Look at Durant go. Nine yards on the play for Durant. Cody Roscoe in there. He's got a forced, a fumble recovery, rather. So the clock rolling now inside of 140 to go in our second quarter. After those first two series, we thought we'd have perhaps a lot more scoring from these teams in the first half. It's going to be a timeout on the field. Duke takes its first time out of the half. It looked like it was a, a personnel. Coach be a second set. timeout. Have to use the first of three here. So James David Cutcliffe arrived on the scene in Durham in 2008. Look at the numbers before Cutcliffe and since. Especially the bowl games and the postseason success and success overall for Coach Cut. Yeah, zero. Zero bowl games. 96 to 2007. And look at that. Six since then. It, it, hey, it, 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 it may sound silly and, and coach speak coming from the booth, but I'm telling you, most importantly, with that gentleman right there, is these kids, the way, the way they grow as young men, playing for a man like that. I, I had a brother that played for Coach David Cutcliffe and it just thinks the world of him, anybody that's ever been around him. And so, yeah, it, it's important to bring a winner to town, and he certainly has done that. And, and that's where it's it's... It hurts guys like Chase Bryson. You don't get the the full Monty, if you will, of David Cutcliffe, what, what he brings to the table. Bryce on first down. Has a man near the 40. It's Pankhole. There's a flag out, and did the football come out as well? There is a flag on the play. Oh, referees are talking. Illegal block in the back, offense number 24. It's a 10 yard penalty, first down. Garner's number 24, he got flagged for the infraction. Pankle makes the catch. And did that ball come loose? It did. 
Trill Williams knocked it loose. Uh, lucky to get that one back and it was just a, a cheapie there by Gardner to just throw his hands out there and it cost his team that was really rolling right there as they near a minute left in this first half. First and 16 over the middle caught. That is Garner. Garner looking for the end zone and he wins the run to the end zone and scores for Duke. Garner goes 52 yards late in the second quarter for the Blue Devils. That's a pretty nice way of saying, my bad, let me make it up to you. Bryce goes right at Garner, who does an excellent job of adjusting, going back behind, and he's popped immediately, but not wrapping up is Jeff Canton, Arku, and everybody else overrunning the football. And it's an easy trip into the end zone for Jarrett Garner. Wow, what a big punch here with just a minute left to play in this first half by this Duke offense. Second TD pass of the game for Chase Bryce. As Ham adds the extra point, he's hit Jalen Calhoun for 26 yards and now 52 to Jarrett Garner. Little bit behind, but still a catchable ball for his receiver. And Kenton Arku, the sophomore, he just got to wrap up. You can't forget to wrap those arms. Here's a look. A ISO shot. Take a play off and it costs you. We saw that a couple times, actually, with the Duke defense against Georgia Tech last week. You know, you, you call it fatigue, call it whatever you want, but you, you cannot take a playoff, and you had way too many guys on that Syracuse Orange defense that decided to take a playoff and making them pay is Garner and company. So Garner had five catches coming into the game. He's got three in this one for 73 yards, and that touchdown of 52 yards. So Bryce has a couple of TD passes. He's now up to five for the season. He's connected with Calhoun and Garner, and it's 24-14 Blue Devils. One minute exactly to go in our second quarter, and the Blue Devils have taken the 10-point advantage. There will be no return on the kickoff as Johnson watches it sail into the end zone as we go down to Abby. Well, as Garrett Gardner sailed into the end zone, the guy following him on that Syracuse defense, Garrett Williams, happened to be his high school teammate. Garrett Williams grew up in North Carolina as well as Garrett Gardner. They both went to Hickory Ridge High School, and they are actually still close friends. Guys, they text almost every day, and I asked Garrett Williams this week, well, have you guys been bantering a little ahead of today's matchup? And he said, actually, not really we're just both really excited to see each other on the field it puts us into perspective how far we both have come awesome wow you know you get to some of these programs and they come from all over the country it is kind of neat and they get to match up abby with old high school foes and teammates devito tries to fire that one to taj harris incomplete that'll stop the clock with 54 seconds to go in our second quarter and Duke still with those two timeouts. If they stop them here, at least you know, a lot can happen with that. You send a punting unit out there, and you gotta gotta shut them down here. Duke team that's it that really hit a speed bump in the middle of this first half, but has really come on strong lately. Devito dumps it off. Tucker. Goes out of bounds just beyond that 35-yard line. It's going to be a first down for the Orange. I'd put one up top. We haven't had a lot of successful plays offensively, but the one that worked in a big way is Tommy DeVito to Taj Harris running by everyone. He's down at the bottom of your screen, and he's got the same guy across from him, the cornerback in Johnson, that he beat for the touchdown earlier. So as a safety, Marquise Waters got to be careful. DeVito steps forward and heaves it. Near the 15, it's incomplete. Sherrod Johnson, number 19, back there for the orange. 
So you're talking about that TD pass, James. That was 79 yards on the first series of the game for the Orange. But DeVito overall now, just 4 of 12 and 117 yards. You know, and a couple drops, and this is one here. Yeah, tough. You got to come back for it. Your momentum is, is taking you, but it's, it's there. And, you know, it would have been a, an outstanding catch, but still a catchable ball that he put there only for his receiver. Nate Thompson was defending, and now DeVito gets cut down. Victor Demokeji. <laughs> Having a good time when he's sacking that quarterback. 19 career sacks now for Demukeji. You know, and, and just loved it. Chris Rumpf, he, he gets, gets a lot of a lot of the attention, and justifiably so, on the other side of the ball. But he says, you know, anytime it comes at me, I try to deflect it and send it over to number 51 because he's he's a special teammate and a special player. One last play for the Orange. It's Tucker. It'll be a big game. Out to the 45-yard line, but that'll do it in the first half. Statistically dominated by Duke. Running for 247 yards as a team in the first half. The Orange, 23 yards on the ground in total. Duke also threw it for 169 yards. So the numbers and the lead on the scoreboard belonging to the Blue Devils. 24-14. 14 points in that second quarter. They only had three all season coming into the game as we go to Abby. I know. Coach, you wanted to emphasize the run game today. How has that allowed you guys to get into a rhythm? Well, I knew we had to run the football. We have been close to being a good running team. We've done well. If we've learned to take care of the dead gum football, we might be okay. I hate to be irritated with a 10-point lead, but I'm going to get their attention about taking care of that ball. How has your defense been able to contain DeVito in the uh, explosive plays? They're not easy to deal with. That first throw, I've never seen anything like it. Amazing. So you know you're not out of danger. They're an explosive offensive team. Our defense has played really well. We've got to tackle well and keep the ball in front of us. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Coach Cutcliffe's team fumbled three times. Seven points for the Orange. All for turnovers in that first half, including the return by Kenton Arcu. He took it in after the ball was jarred loose 28 yards away. We've arrived at halftime inside the Dome, and the visiting Blue Devils have the 10-point lead. This is ACC football. I have been a teacher for 14 years. I was a firefighter for 31 years. I've been a nurse for 45 years. Every reason to be bouncing on the sidelines in the loud house because they're making most of the noise. Again, we've got that constant artificial soundtrack going on inside the dome as triggers will kick it away. Ernie Davis, Legends Field. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Abby Lamar, and our outstanding ACC College Football Production crew with you from upstate New York and Syracuse University. Johnson collects the free ball, leaps over a Duke player near the 10. It's a lot of work for a short return for Nikeem Johnson. <laughs> I'll say, and a lot of breath holding for Syracuse fans. It starts with the mishandling of the kick to begin with, and then anytime you go airborne, usually it isn't a whole lot of good that can happen, but still, he gets what he can. He gets him off of that goal line, but a good job on the coverage by the kickoff cover team, and it'll be starting with a long way to go near their own 10-yard line for DeVito and the Orange offense in the second half. What is halftime for, James Bates? For one thing. Well, it's for this offense, it's to figure out how we're going to get first down. Adjustments. Let's see what kind of adjustments have been made on both sides of the football. DeVito, the long ball. Almost connected with Harris again, just through the fingertips. Michael Carter trying to go stride for stride with Taj Harris. Boy, a couple of these long balls, of course, the one that resulted in seven points earlier and this one this one is i mean it can't be thrown any better Taj harris caught that one in the first half the first drive on offense and this one goes right through his fingertips way too many drops for an offense that just needs a little pick me up needs something good to go their way devito and harris connected for 79 yards and a touchdown in the first series of the game for the orange as johnson 
makes the catch. Let's take a look back at those keys to the game. Well, Duke, get greedy. Keep the football. Don't give it up with the turnovers. Don't give it up with three and outs. Sacks, they've, they've given it up with the turnovers, but they've kept it enough thanks to that run game. And Syracuse winning the run game, not even close right now. They've been run all over defensively. You can't get it going on offense. DeVito on what looked like a design run has nowhere to go. Wrapped up, Derek Tangelo, number 54, is there. And Tangelo signals over to the sideline, bring in that punt return unit. Yeah, well, they, they dodge a little bit of a bullet, this defense does, because the pretty throw by DeVito to start things off is dropped. And then it's just a whole lot of going nowhere. So definitely not the adjustment, Tom. Definitely not what the doctor ordered. Dr. Babers, that is. The head coach of this Orange team telling Abby, we've got to stay on the field. Third down continues to be a struggle for the Orange. Now just one of eight as this punt goes out of bounds. Let's see where they mark this one. Now it's past the 45. It's up to about the 48 of Duke on the punt by Cooney of 37 yards. So the Duke defense has been strong on third down today. Again, the Orange just one of eight, and they hand the ball right back to the offense in spectacular field position. It's real, and it's spectacular for the Blue Devils. At the 49 officially, right near midfield at Ernie Davis Legends Field, the Heisman Trophy winner from Syracuse, Ernie Davis. Jackson. Looking very much like a featured back today as he takes it to the 45 of the orange. Hanna had the tackle. Nice job, guys, getting up to that second level and leading the way. And just running hard, carrying bodies with him. There's a nice pickup of six. Opens up things for that play caller, David Cutcliffe. Jackson. And the action for the Blue Devils. Working hard today, number four in white and Duke blue. By the way, that number was his high school number. He changed from 25 last year to four. High school number at Pace Academy in Atlanta for Jackson. That's a first down. Jackson again. It looks like Jeff Kantnarku holding his knee. He had the formal recovery in the run for the touchdown afterwards in the first half, and it doesn't look good in on the tackle, but it's a little too late, so damage and an injury to boot. We'll check on him when we come back. Did you wake up raving a... Did you know the source of odor in your home could be all... By the way, Duke has converted on their last four attempts on third down, but it was Kenton Arku tried to tackle Jackson. Ah, he gets that, that left leg. knee. Yeah, caught up under it. He's grabbing that knee. It looked like the ankle got caught up as well. You know, and, and you saw at the beginning of that, just that right side of the offensive line, just washing down that defensive front of Syracuse. And then you got a linebacker you know, that's just catching right now. Guess who got that carry, James? <laughs> well, Deion Jackson. Marlo Wax, who just came into the game for Canton Arku, made the tackle, number 32. Freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. We're high on Wax. We're really excited about his talent. I hate to lose Canton Arku, though. Bryce. Hits his receiver, Jake Bobo. Very capable hands of the junior from Belmont, Massachusetts. Melifonwu, who is also from Massachusetts, knocked him out of bounds. Well, that's a nice hook up there. That, that's important. You know, something that, that isn't just an easy pitch. It's a timing route right there for a first down. That was big for this offense. This will be Jackson. 25-yard line. You know, we, we talked about it in the first half. Coach Cut spent a lot of time talking about the timing of this run game, how it wasn't always there early on. It, 
talking about the offensive line blocking and the mesh point of the quarterback and the running back, it certainly seems to be clicking, and it seems to be right here today so far. Bryce wants the throw, looking for the five-yard line. And that's incomplete to Dennis Smith. Garrett Williams back there. Smith didn't play in that Virginia Tech game. Would have been an injury because one thing you can't say about this Duke team, they, they haven't had a, a positive COVID test since early July. Which a lot of football teams wish they could say that. Let's we'll see if they can convert on this third and long now. Six of ten on third. Down that ball is knocked away and covered by the Blue Devils. Jonathan Kingsley, uh, Kingsley Jonathan rather, knocked that one away. Duke was able to fall on it. Duke falls on this one, but could have been number four. When you look at the interceptions that were dropped, could have been a couple more. How about Kingsley? You think this football team isn't hungry to go get that football and create those turnovers? Man, you can tell that it is a big, big point of emphasis to go after that football. And the Nigerian-born Jonathan King or Kingsley Jonathan. <laughs> I, I did the same thing, James. Tough. <laughs> Charlie Ham. In there for the field goal attempt. And that one is right down Broadway. Second field goal for Ham. That one was from 44 yards away to match his jersey number. He's also connected from 36 yards away. Charlie Ham puts three more on the board for the Blue Devils in front of the Orange. Here's another cleaning tip from Mr. Clean. Cleaning tough bathroom and kitchen messes with sprays and wipes can be a struggle. There's an easier way. Try Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Just wet, squeeze, and erase tough messes like bathtub soap scum and caked on grease from oven doors. Of the Ring of Honor, Jim Beheim, Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little, the legend of 44, and Dwayne Pearl Washington, the late Pearl. Many heroics inside the Carrier Dome. Still a little bit of room in that ring of honor for a Tom Wormy. No, oh, I'll tell you what. Tom Look Wormy. at those names, and you ju it just sends shivers oh, up your spine when you think about those players and coaches. And Coach Beheim also played here for the Orange. And, and he comes to every single game we're here. He's a big fan, big supporter of this football program as well. Pearl from the basketball side of things, and then the succession of Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, and Floyd Little, 44. That number retired by the university in 05. And you know what's cool about it, too, is, is even you, you carry it over onto the basketball court, and 44 is important over there, too. Derek Coleman, a lot of greats have worn it there. You know, Rob Conrad is, is a guy that I used to like to watch uh, the Absolutely. Board when it was still available here on, on the football field. Collision at the 25-yard line. Mentioned it earlier, Tom, and this is one thing. From, from Johnson to Lewis to Waters, it's a secondary that will come up and hit you. That time it was Jeremiah Lewis, the sophomore from Plano, Texas. Had the interception last week against Virginia Tech, but they do a good job of what Coach Matt Guerrero, the defensive coordinator, calls pulling the trigger. Take away that space. Don't give them an opportunity to square up and make a move on them. DeVito. Pass complete beyond the 30. Spinning away is Harris. And he goes up past the 45, and maybe that's the shot in the arm that the Orange offense needed right there as Leonard Johnson made the play for Duke. Well, that's been a good matchup for him. It's worked a couple times, and this time it looked like Johnson putting that foot in the grass. He seemed to slip coming out of his break and taking advantage of it, moving those chains. 22 yards on the last play. This one to Luke Benson, and Luke Benson goes all the way. Tight end number 87, Luke Benson. Nobody could catch him. Fifty-three yards, DeVito to Benson. Back-to-back -back plays, DeVito hit Harris first for 22 yards. 
And then 53 yards. Luke Benson, the sophomore, took it in and ran with it. There's Lost there's, side. there's Benson. The penalties declined. The try is good lined up there in the backfield and he just gets lost and, and not only does he get lost but they run a crosser and some traffic in between and it's off to the races for a guy who can really run for a big man the sophomore Benson as a freshman last year had that 70 yard touchdown reception that was off to the races against Holy Cross and here no one's going to catch him wearing a Blue Devil jersey but trying to run through too much traffic, that's a nice play call by the offensive coordinator, new offensive coordinator for Dino Babers, Sterling Gilbert. Get those guys involved. Of course you want to get Taj Harris involved. They, they go to him to play before, get something going through the air. And man, get some feel good going back in the arm of Tommy DeVito, who when he's on, he can really throw some strikes down the field. DeVito likes to throw the long ball for touchdowns five times. He did it twice against Georgia Tech. A couple today, 79 yards to Harris, 53 yards to Benson, his first TD of the season. So DeVito now has a couple of passing TDs. And just like that, Syracuse back into this game, 27-21. Stinson to the 20-yard line. Another look at it, and, and all the way, they had that one drawn up, and good hustle to the paint by Benson. And how about 13? You think he's happy? That offense needed that in a big way. <laughs> Coach Babers wanted some first downs. How about just a touchdown? Go right after him after the Dodge Harris big first down catch of 20 plus. So let's see what Duke comes back out there and see if they can answer. Bryce will throw complete. That's Harding Jr. Fondly on the coverage, but about six yards gained by Harding, whose pops was a football player at Cincinnati. There's a flag down here. Offside, defense number 16. A five-yard penalty results in the first down. Mike Roach is our referee. Leon Lowry, the guilty party, the freshman. Remember we had Jeff Kent and Arcu leave the game. We got some younger backers in there. Marlo Wax, we saw him earlier. Costly. You're going to stuff him. You don't jump off sides and force a third down. Instead, helping him out with the penalties. Five receivers set for Bryce. Picks one out. Hits him at the 38-yard line. Marweedy. Jake Marweedy, the junior, Lake Forest, Illinois. It's good to see him back out there, too. He's, he's had a tough go with the injuries, fighting in the last couple of years, an ACL. Injury mixed in there. Glad to have him healthy. And there's an empty set. Now for Chase Bryce on second and five. Looking out to the right and incomplete to Penkhole. You know, one thing, when Bryce sits in that pocket and throws the football, he, he, he seems to be a, a lot calmer, more relaxed with his throws and finishing his throws. Almost every time he gets on the roll and is throwing it on the run, and it's not necessarily he's on the run because of pressure, but he's rolling out. He's just, just off the target way too many times. Here's a third down and five now. Six of 11 on third down. Pankel, the slant and the catch up to the big orange. Yes, and on to the Syracuse side of the 50. First down, Duke. Lowry had to make the tackle. 13 yards on the play. Good quick throw and 
you got to go where they're going, not where they are. When you got a guy like Panko coming full speed across the middle, moving those chains. Nice tough catch for Panko in the offense, and you've got another orange defender down. This time it's Carter. We'll be right back. All right, Coach Cut, Chase Bryce, and these Blue Devils. I'm hoping they can figure out a way to go into that one at 1-4 one and four and not 0-5. Oh a lot of football left here in the third and fourth quarter. And there's a look at Carter, who was helped off just moments ago. And we'd already seen that one, so he's fighting through and out there banging. Hopefully he'll be back in, help this defense out that's lost a couple. Seen too many guys wearing the orange unis being helped off. First and 10 for Chase Bryce in this offense. Jackson. Just about to the 45 yard line. Deion Jackson, who's run for over 100 yards for the fifth time in his career, but well beyond that number. How about 170 yards rushing for Deion Jackson? Well, and how about the fact that every time they touch the ball, it seems they get at least three yards. Just, just so tough, so tough on a defense. Quick pass, Bobo out of the five receiver set. Bobo down the sideline and tackled near the 20 yard line. Jake Bobo, catch and run. Third catch of the game for Bobo and he takes it down inside the 20. Good job by Gray to go out there and stock block. Also, you've got the big offensive lineman down the field as well in the tackle. It's, you know, it, blame it on some new guys being out there. Blame it on fatigue, but you got to tackle better. This is a well-coached defense, but they're not playing like it all the time here in this game. Jackson carrying for Duke. He's closing in on 2,000 career yards. And now he'll split very wide outside the numbers as Duke has just entered the CPI security red zone. We'll see what Chase Bryce and David Cutcliffe dial up for second and nine. Again, Jackson, number four, at the bottom of your screen. Bryce! Intercepted as he threw it over the middle. Picked off by the orange. Michael Jones is number 13. Fourth takeaway of the season for Michael Jones. Pressure's going to come untouched. Cody Roscoe, who's been big in this one as well, and he throws it right to Michael Jones. Just what this Syracuse defense needed. One more turnover, and there's the pressure forcing the fast throw by Roscoe. So that is interception number eight on the season for the Orange. Leads the conference and the nation. Michael Jones, a sophomore from Miami, Florida, as Duke was bearing down and inside the red zone. Puts the brakes on the Duke drive. DeVito forced back to his goal line. Just had to heave that one into his own bench. So, Tom, the, the run game opens up the pass game with the play-action pass. But sometimes, as, as you mature as, as a linebacker, you can get a feel for the way those, those offensive linemen, or the weight on their hands or, or lack thereof. And, and you can get a pre-snap read and a feel for what they're trying to do to you. And so you don't completely sell out on that run, and you drop quickly into those zones. And Michael Jones, a couple times, has been right there Maybe when he, it, he wasn't expected by Chase Bryce. Here he is. He's walked up, showing blitz, and he's going to come back out of it. And there's nobody here, an empty set anyway, and just drops right into the zone. And just a gosh, if it wasn't intercepted there, it might have been by somebody else trailing the intended receiver. Not a very smart throw by Chase Bryce with the pressure coming on. Got to just eat that one. So it's third down and 10 quickly here for DeVito. Eludes the rush, throws the deep ball. Incomplete. A long pass by 
DeVito to Courtney Jackson, who did get a hand on it. DeVito again, he, he's putting it up there. He's got some arm, and here, here's the pressure on the run as the pressure comes from Hayward. And one thing about DeVito on that long ball, he's given his guys chances. They've had chances. They've had their hands on the football. Would have been a tough one, but still a catchable football. Waters lucky there. Robertson going to watch the Cooney punt bounce out of bounds near midfield. 5.03 to go in the third quarter after the 35-yard punt by the Orange as now we get a message from Works Landroy. Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Enter to win at winalandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. You don't need one of those inside the dome, although I encourage you to go out and get one, James, but you don't need one inside the carrier dome as Chase Bryce is up to 190 yards today. A couple of TD passes for Bryce. TD passes of 26 and 52 yards to Jared Garner right before the end of the first half. Mateo Durant got rocked at the 40. Big time collision as Durant was folded over. Wow. <laughs> he comes over there and Durant, usually it's Durant at the end of these runs delivering the blow. James, that's Lee Koba, number 21. 21 on 21 on the hit. And there he is again, number 21. And that's a first down for Duke. That rushing game continues to grind out yardage for the Blue Devils. Boy, and, and after that defense is forced to come off the bench, feel like feel like a parrot just repeating it every time. But to get the stop, three and out defensively, and to give it back to your offense in good position. Jackson goes inside the 30. With his effort today, he has gone over 2,000 yards in his career. As he took that last carry for the Blue Devils. He's going to sleep very well tonight, James Bates, after the effort this afternoon inside the dome. He's got 23 carries, 181 yards. Amazing. He wants it again. Orange try to force him back at the 28. Marlo Wax. Yeah, Deion Jackson's running so hard that he's got dirt on his jersey. I, there's not even dirt. any dirt in here. I mean, look how dirty his jersey is. Just the workhorse today, number four. So third and five now. Protect that football. Number one priority offensively. Bryce, the pass. Complete. Smith. First down, Duke. Back in the red zone for the Blue Devils. And it's Garrett Williams here on the coverage. You know where they're trying to, to hook those routes up at. You know where they're breaking them off at, trying to get to those first down sticks. Smith does just that. But then, you, know, you, you can't, after you allow the catch, you got to come up and you got to come under control and make the drop. Too many missed tackles again and knocking on the door one more time, this offense. Smith got 14 yards on that last play. Throw on the run by Bryce. Tough throw. And the completion on the far sideline, that's Jalen Calhoun. Those two have combined for a touchdown of this game. It came back in the first quarter of 26 yards. There you see Bryce on the fly out there rolling out and hitting his target, which hasn't always been the case to, today, but it's good to see. Still a nice job breaking up there by Trill Williams, and that's how you step up and make a tackle. Trill Williams, leave it up to the safety. Put on a clinic. Second and ten. Bryce caught near the goal line. And just short of the goal line is Bobo. On the catch, took it down close to the goal line. Not quite in for Jake Bobo. Seems like a little bit of miscommunication. You're going to see the fake to the other side that Jackson goes to by Bryce, but he doesn't let, doesn't let him affect him. Still able to throw a strike right there 
right in the breadbasket of Bobo. First and goal. 13 yards for Bobo on the catch. They give it to Jackson trying to leap into the end zone, and he's come up short. Jackson went airborne, and the Orange D was waiting. Well, you got to time it up. When they go airborne, you got to time it up with them. They do an excellent job on something that I'm guessing they don't practice too much. How close was this, James? Well, we're about to find out. Gosh. Well, too late now. But it looked to me like the argument could have been made. Uh-oh. Knifing through there. And big McKinley Williams, the bear, with the penetration. Watch right in the middle. Wow. Boy, they need a whole lot more of that. Third down. Let's see if this defense can make a stand. Shoot, Bear's not messing around. He's, he's masked up on the field. So again, they ruled Bobo short. They've given it to Jackson twice now. He tried to jump into the end zone. Then he got stopped for a loss, and it's third and goal. Bryce, timing pattern. Cannot hook up with Jared Garner. And now it's fourth and goal. 38 seconds to go in the third quarter. James Bates, what are you going to do here? Well, you're it's first and goal on the one, maybe inside the one. And Coach Cut sending out in this close game, six-point game right now, sending out the field goal unit. And, and I think that's the way you got to go. But it's just, boy, what a stand by this defense for Syracuse. It's created turnover after turnover. Yeah, they've had their struggles on tackling. But right down there, a big goal line stand and hold them at least to a three-point try. Ham, 26 yards away, and there's no question about it. And he's now three for three. Let's reflect back on that Jake Bobo catch. Went for 13 yards right to the goal line. So the arm with the ball in it doesn't hit the ground. The knee doesn't hit the ground. The, mm, that, they, well, the, it's, it's the plane and that ball, because that ball's right there with the elbow. It certainly seemed to break the plane, but it won't matter. That one looked a little bit easier even than the other one that we saw. If it was Durant, I believe, that had an elbow down. That's that's uh, kind of it's James, kind of surprising that they didn't take a look at that one. I mean, every play is reviewed yeah. during a college game. You know, and, and maybe uh, maybe just not quick enough, and maybe a little bit too quick for an offense that likes to turn the heat on when you make a good play. Quick, get up over that ball, try to catch a napping defense. A little bit of a backfire there. So instead of the seven, they get three out of it. And now it's a nine-point Duke lead. Syracuse needed that big stand near the goal line. Johnson knocked to the turf on a wicked hit. Jalen Alexander for the Blue Devils, number 30, hit Johnson. Wow. I mean, that, that's just running right through a guy. Again, there's a, a guy that's a backup defensive back out there on special teams covering. <laughs> it's a physical group of defensive backs and showing you on special teams as well. Even the backups are out there cracking a little bit. Goodness, what a collision. Right up the middle for Tucker. Almost has first down yardage. Out near the 25-yard line for Sean Tucker. So the final seconds of our third quarter. Nine-point game after the third field goal of the game by Charlie Hamm of 26 yards just a moment ago. He's got two field goals in the third quarter. And before this quarter will end, there is a flag on the play. So let's check the flag first. Illegal formation. Offense, five men in the backfield. It's a five-yard penalty. Second down. We'll extend the quarter for one on time play. So there will be an additional play in this third quarter.
Lead at halftime was 10. It's now 9 for Duke. David Cutcliffe is 51 and 9, James, when having the halftime lead, which he does this afternoon as they went into the locker room up by 10. Well, they've also given up a couple third quarter leads here this year alone. And, you know, and, and here's an offense struggling for first downs. And you, you go back five yards and see if they can make up for it. DeVito throwing the long ball in between two possible choices. But incomplete. That's the end of the third quarter. So that is the end of the third. 30-21. The Blue Devils have the lead after three. These are beautiful. Fourth quarter over the orange. And ACC football is presented by CPI Security. Inside the Carrier Dome, Orange football, Harris on the catch, trying to get to that 30 and he's spun down. Leonard Johnson had the tackle on Taj Harris. Tom, ACC football teams wanting some CPI security for their offense is the way the Syracuse defense been stealing footballs from them. Right and left, they forced four turnovers in this game. Another fumble that was recovered by Duke and two dropped interceptions. But can they step up and get off the field by way of just downs, just, just stopping this offense when they get back out there? And right now you've got the Duke defense out there, and, and Shelton, good linebacker, the sophomore, banged up a little bit. Physical football player in there. Four takeaways by the Orange D. That's now 14 this season. They started the day second overall in that category in the football bowl subdivision. Now see if the offense can step up. And a little play action for DeVito. Pressured and going down. The sack. Rumpf was there. So was Mausi, number 35. Well, it wasn't there immediately, but the coverage was absolutely there, and a couple extra beats. Boom, the pressure from the edge, so DeVito steps up to avoid, but then here comes that second wave, and there's Chris Rumpf, the freshman All-American a couple of years ago, whose dad was a heck of a player at South Carolina. He's now an assistant coach with the Texans in the NFL. Harris on the catch up the sidelines. And out near the 44-yard line, they'll give him the 45. And a first down for the Orange as Johnson forced him out. And that catch and run for Harris going for 21 yards for Syracuse. Boy, Taj Harris is so slippery. Tough to bring down. Very rarely do you see anybody get a good hit on him. And he's tough to corral, as you're seeing here, in coverage as well. Starting to click a little bit and push this along, trailing by nine, this offense. Marquezzi Pierre on the carry. And Jawar Jordan was injured in the Georgia Tech game. Not available today, didn't suit up. So here's your second back, the junior from Orlando, Florida, Liberty High School. Game of about four right there on first down. First rush of the game for number 22 at Orange Pierre. This pass complete, 45-yard line, Anthony Quealy. Close to another Orange first down, and it will be enough. Sticks will move for Syracuse, trailing by nine. Here in the fourth. They dominated the game a year ago in Durham, 49-6. to six. Duke leads the overall series 3-1, to one, just the fifth meeting between the teams. And third is ACC opponents, and they've split those two games. So look at the freshman back, Tucker, who wasn't there in Durham last year, and it was an offense. DeVito and company rushed for almost 300 yards against the Blue Devils. DeVito, short pass, complete, hack it. So the senior Aaron Hackett on the catch. Well, on the run and just slipping Hackett into the mix. And how about these last couple plays? These receivers 
fighting in Hackett and Quilly the play before for extra yardage to go move those chains. Hungry for those first downs, just like Babers asked for at halftime. This pass complete, complete to Queeley. 27-yard line for Queeley. The catch by Hackett was his first of the game. Johnson made the play defensively. And you see him still rushing hard up front, but starting to chip away. You know, it's a defense. A lot of credit of hanging around in some of these ball games and giving them an opportunity, but still they've got to stay out there and find a way not to get worn down and to finish whatever's asked for them here in the final 11 and a half minutes, finish one up and try to get a win. Because Syracuse right now starting to roll a little bit, get some feel good. DeVito has used eight different receivers. Has to get away from a crumbling pocket and it falls on in him. DeVito sacked Chris Rump. And DeVito slow to get up for the orange. DeVito down for Syracuse. You're going to see the helmet right there come off of Drew Jordan. So he's unable to pursue. And then finally they bottle him up. And this has happened before, remember, this year against Pitt. Rex Culpepper came in and immediately threw a touchdown pass to Taj Harris. But let's hope that Tommy's okay. Your boss thinks you're the best. Did you know that every single flush flings odors onto your soft surfaces? Then they get released. Syracuse campus in the Carrier Dome. And this is the previous play in the injury to Tommy DeVito. Man, really hurt for this guy. He sacked seven times against North Carolina. Again, against Pitt. And you see, it looks like his, his ankle got caught underneath the defender. Watch out now. Third down and long. Somebody find Taj Harris. It was a 69-yard touchdown pass. Rex Culpepper came in for the injured DeVito against Pittsburgh and struck quickly to number three. He's at the bottom of your screen near the sideline. Senior from Tampa, Florida comes in for DeVito. Low snap to Culpepper. Quick release to Harris to the 30. That is short of the 25. That was the line to gain. Marquise Waters on the tackle, and Harris is not happy. Rex doing a good job of going down and getting that low snap, being able to come up and give him a chance, and Taj Harris really upset that he couldn't convert there. So here's Andre Schmidt. Four of six on the season for Schmidt. 51 career field goals, one of the best in school history. Just inside the pipe for Schmidt. And that field goal is good. From 48 yards away for Schmidt. Three points on the board for the Orange. They have cut the lead to six. 10, 14 to go. Career field goal number 52 in an Orange uniform for Andre Schmidt. Experian Boost has helped millions of people. How can it help you? I just boosted 15 points with the King back and forth trying to keep my eyes on Tommy DeVito as he was sitting on the bench. For starters, he couldn't even make it to the medical tent. He just sat straight down. They were looking at his ankle, took his shoe off. But as soon as his team kicked that field goal, he hopped up and hobbled over to congratulate his teammates on their success. So it says a lot about him. We'll keep you updated as we get more from down here. Uh, thanks, Abby. Such a tough guy, a scrapper, and a guy who has played his guts out for this football team. And there you saw the pain in his face as he was leaving. So don't know that we'll see him here today, but hopefully he'll be back before this season's over. So it looks like it'll be up to Rex Culpepper the rest of the way. But first things first, the defense got to shut down a running attack that's had its way against him all day in Duke. At the goal line, this is Stinson. Evidently, he'd already signaled for the fair catch. Started running, right, James? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just check it. Finn is at the game clock at 10 minutes, 14 seconds. 10 1 4. Thank you. Well, it's into the end zone. 
So did he catch it, catch it, catch it in the field of play, and then his momentum took him into the end zone? I, well, if, if that was the case, I don't think that the, the the end zone call comes into play. I think they're just saying that he caught it in the end zone. So it's ball kicked into the end zone. We'll bring it out here to the 25, but he, he That's the call. Don't blow it dead. Well, the other official was signaling start the clock, so... Okay, Mateo Durant on the carry. You gotta find a way to stop this. Defensively, who, who's gonna step up? Not just step up and, and, and create a turnover, create the big play, but who, who's gonna be solid, stand in there and stuff this run consistently and get off the field? Bryce. Keeps it. Leaps over the 40. Bryce up to the 45-yard line. Josh Black had to make the tackle. 13 yards on the play. Well, a good read there because they're crashing down on Durant. Pulls it, tucks it, and goes, holds on to the football, most importantly. Moves those chains. Under nine and a half now to play in the fourth quarter. Duke in search of its first win of the season as they give it back to Durant. Durant and Jackson have run for over 100 yards in this game. So, there's a lot of football to be played, and I don't know necessarily, you might be thinking, well, gosh, don't they want to eat away at the clock? But there, there's just so much football to be played, and if this is what you feel you've been successful with, keeping the defense back on their heels and, and keeping the pressure on them, then, whoa! Boy, almost another interception in and out of the hands of Carter, who has been in and out of this football game with injuries. Almost gifted right there. Big third down and seven. Can Syracuse stand and have a chance to go take the lead? Eight of 13 in the game on third down for Duke. Bryce, as those edges bent around him, hits his man at the 45, and inside of the 45 to Noah Gray, and a first down for Duke on that pass play. Wow. 19 catches coming into the day, so you better believe you, you, you got to look up 87 on a big third down situation. The big body of the tight end, he hooks it up right there at the yardage needed, and they'll move him again. Fresh set of downs. What a time for the first catch of the day for Noah Gray, the senior from Lemonster, Massachusetts, as Durant had the run of the previous play, but David Cutcliffe finally found his oh. tight end. It was late in the game against Virginia Tech as well. Here's a guy who led the all-ACC tight ends with 51 catches just a year ago. Got to take advantage of that big man. He's a big playmaker. Bryce. Complete to Dennis Smith. Right near the marker. Garrett Williams on the tackle. It's enough for a first down. Yes. Sticks will roll for Duke. Boy, and how much did they need this 0-4 coming in? Game's not over yet, but just to see their quarterback find some rhythm, perhaps for the first time in a Duke Blue Devils uniform, former Clemson Tiger Chase Bryce. Durant rumbling his way right up the middle. Nine yards for Durant, James. Gosh, look at him up front, just moving bodies around. I think that's John Taylor. Is it 57 or 67? Maybe Chambers. So they're looking at Michael Jones, and we'll be back in just a moment. I have been a teacher for 14 years. I was a firefighter for 31 years. Ah, big boys in the backfield for Duke, of course, is are going to be the ones providing us with those big bow moments. Deion Jackson, time after time, and hats off to that offensive line. No matter who it is carrying the football behind him, Mateo Durant looking pretty good as well as you see. 147 for Jackson and 134 for Mateo Durant, the junior. Man, the offensive line 
really deserves a lot of credit. They got some push up front last week. And look at the rushing yards, 312 to 37. Key to the game for Syracuse coming in was win the rushing battle. Nowhere close right now, but they're still in this football game. Jackson makes a cut at the line of scrimmage. Look at him down to the 10-yard line. Deion Jackson. An incredible afternoon for that young man. Just look at him. And, and you know, and, and, and in those highlights, I got to make sure I take care of Rakavius Chambers, the senior big offensive lineman, because it's just every time you see a, a big wave of orange just being washed down on that defensive front, you got Chambers in there, Will Taylor. Well, they have really done a good job up front here today. First and goal from the nine. It's going to be Jackson. Maybe one on the play. If he got one, that is now 600 yards of total offense for Duke today. Big numbers on the ground. 277 passing yards as well. James, we talked at the very top of the show about offensive traction. That's exactly what they got today and more. Absolutely. And that's what a rushing attack can do for any football team. It, it can really open up a lot of... A lot of options for an offense, and Syracuse found that out in their first win against Georgia Tech two weeks ago. Bryce tosses it, caught by Gray. And he's down near the three as he got tackled by Jihad, Jihad Carter. Nice job by Carter. Get up there, pull that trigger, take away the option, take away the space. Go, turn it on right now. Don't give a guy a chance to square up on you and give you a little shake and cut back in. Cut off the angle, chopped him down. It's a third down and goal now. Blue Devils, 6-11 in total. Third and goal for Chase Price and Duke to the end zone and in. It's an easy run for Mateo Durant and six more on the board for the Blue Devils. Go for two here. Take a look at the left tackle, Casey Holman. Sophomore who started all 12 games last year as a freshman. Nice pop to seal that edge. Well, at the same time, making sure he didn't grab a hold too much and get flagged for the penalty. So down there, a third and goal. They punch it right in. And now they'll try to make it a 38-24 game with the two-point try. Second TD of the game for Durant. Bryce has it untouched to the end zone and the two-point conversion for Duke. An amazing afternoon in the dome for the Blue Devils on the road. Durant with the TD. Chase Bryce with the two-point conversion. Well, Durant's tired of us talking about Deion Jackson all day up here. <laughs> he wants back in that paint for six. And don't make it seven, make it eight after Chase Bryce carries it in behind the big Noah Gray block. He's got three now this season. Runs of 15 and three for Durant into the end zone. What a rushing attack. So far today for Duke, 331 yards rushing. James, I just said 331 yards rushing. <laughs> it's been unbelievable. It's, it, it's an offensive line that is, that is really, really doing their part, too. Letting those backs have some fun. They want to have fun and celebrate a win after this one. they got to do the little things like cover these kicks. Johnson can sting you, and he's going to fair catch it here. Well, they've had some trouble covering here. They won't have to worry about it right now. Syracuse had cut the lead to 24-21. Tommy DeVito, a couple of TD passes, including one in the third quarter of 53 yards to Benson, but that is the current status for Tommy DeVito and not what you want to see if you're Dino Babers in the orange. Absolutely not. There's a guy and a senior, at least, that, you, that has played some football out here for the orange, Rex Culpepper. Senior from Tampa Plant, one start under his belt in his Syracuse career. Incomplete pass from Culpepper, looking for Sherrod Johnson, number 19. The Culpepper story, well documented, cancer survivor. Just a miracle that he's back 
in an orange uniform. Well, it's truly a blessing that he's out there. It's a tough guy, outstanding family back there in Tampa. Monica and Brad, his parents, and on his assistant judge, the tight end at Penn State. Nobody there for Rex on that pass as we check in with Abby. Well, guys, Rex Culpepper, Culpepper rang the bell on June 2018, and he has not cut his hair since. It's a miraculous story of how he went through March to June with 100 hours of chemotherapy, a very intense treatment for him. He has 100 tally marks tattooed on his side for every hour that he endured of that chemo. And, guys, it's such a cool story to see him out here after he got his first appearance a couple games ago and we'll see if he can do it again today absolutely happy well, they need him in a big way here and they're not going to get it on with this with the pressure wow they're in a hurry jordan and rumpf coming from opposite ends and just dropping rex culpepper immediately about as soon as he receives that football he receives the pop by rumpf couple of sacks in the game for Chris Rump. Drew Jordan also in on the play for the Blue Devils. Robertson is deep. Cooney punting from the two. Robertson Ooh. will let it bounce. It, almost, well, that, it did almost hit him, James. It almost bounced off he of was, him. He was directing traffic and didn't realize that the ball was in close proximity. How about 62 yards on the punt from Nolan Cooney? Well, they need it. He had a boomer earlier, and then he hit a couple of 30-ish yarders. A little, little, way too close for comfort. Oh, that would have been a nice gift for Syracuse. Already have had a few turnovers. So here's the chance to keep that well-oiled and efficient running machine going and shove this one down by eating up some clock. It's Mateo Durant, the backup choice behind Chase Bryce right now in the pistol look. Syracuse only allowed one sack against Georgia Tech. They've allowed five today against Duke. And Chris Rumpf and Drew Jordan combined on that last one to end the Orange offensive series, and now time is a factor. Just over four minutes to go in the fourth. And now you will see a situation where even though it's the M.O. of Coach Cut and company to heat it up a little bit and get some tempo going, that won't be the case here. It's, they'll chew away every bit of that clock. James, last time Duke was at the Dome, 2014, they won here. 27-10. They've got the 38-24 lead. 3.44 to go in the game. So for the Blue Devils, who started 0-4 this year, trying to hang on to this win in the Dome, and here's what's coming up. We'll be in Raleigh next week for that one. 3.30 kick against NC State, which has already won today on the road in Virginia. Then they'll play for the victory bell, James, November 7th against North Carolina. Well, we had that game last year, and there was some drama in that one. Went to the wire. That was exciting, and look forward to them getting together with UNC again this year. There's some drama in Chapel Hill right now, James, as well. 56-45. Heels lead Virginia Tech, and that's very late in the fourth. And another big chunk for Mateo Durant. So the Orange, who a couple of weeks ago beat Georgia Tech for their first win, will take on Liberty next up. And we'll have that for you on your regional sports network. They beat Liberty on the road. They were at Liberty 24-0 last year. And then it's the Clemson Tigers. They got a little bit of history with those guys. Yeah, but you know what they won't have? It doesn't look like anytime soon. It certainly doesn't look like they're going to have a Tommy DeVito. You know, they've had so many guys banged up today on defense as well. Jeff Canton, our coup, and I hope that's not the case. This is a team that needs all the tools they can get, especially when they go to a place like Death Valley to take on the Clemson Tigers. 
Durant again. And the rest of the league has got to take notice right now, James, of this backfield combination for David Cutcliffe, both over 100 yards. Tommy DeVito on the sidelines, injured here in the fourth. On crutches now, and there's a brace on that left ankle for Tommy DeVito, who finished the game 13 of 26, 255 yards, and a couple of TD passes. Opened the game with that long 79-yarder, far sideline, Taj Harris. And, and a couple of nicely thrown balls after that that were dropped that could have been big hitters. And the hits keep on coming from this offense as they keep charging, pounding hard, and, you know, over on the other sidelines, Coach Cutcliffe, they, you know, he said, he told you, we could end up lighting it up when we go up there. And they really did. You know, it, it was, they did, thanks in large part to a running game that was just unstoppable today. And what did it allow? It allowed Chase Bryce to kind of start strong, and then he hit that big dip where it was just ugly for a while. But he certainly got that confidence back and that rhythm back. And now this is a football team that goes into that NC State game next week with some rhythm, with some feel good. And that's it's 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 just going to be infectious at practice. It'll it'll make for a better week of practice and a little extra bounce in the step. Duke takes its first time out of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. 48 seconds on the game clock. And so the Blue Devils, you know, you often hear coaches, James, talk about the turnover battle. And Duke fumbled three times and lost those. They threw an interception as well, which is nothing new for this Syracuse Orange defense. The takeaways, they've got four today, and yet Duke is winning this game 38-24, James, late in the fourth. Just look at the rushing total. Over 350 yards total for Duke on the ground and two backs well over 100 yards. Uh, and and it, isn't it fun to kind of, you can almost look into in the minds of those backs when one's out there doing his job and that's your buddy in the running back meeting room. You can't wait to get out there and get the ball yourself. There's only one ball, so you got to share it. And, and it just provides just such a good, healthy competition when you've got two backs that are really feeding off of one another. And it's, it's got to fire you up if you're a Duke fan. Look, they keep on coming here and they'll move the chain one last time perhaps how about 12 of 17 on third down in this game for the Blue Devils and six of their last seven well and you know it's justifiably so we, we've talked up this defense of, of new defensive coordinator Tony White because they've done such a good job of staying in there and creating turnovers keeping their offense in the game but getting off of the field in just a normal type situation, not even through the turnover, uh, it's become an issue in, in tackling. Tackling, just a little bit of the fundamentals. They gotta take a step back and put it together and clean it up against Liberty next week. It's gonna be the final seconds right here for David Cutcliffe and the Blue Devils. They win it over Dino Babers in the orange inside the Carrier Dome. In just the fifth meeting between the programs and the coaches will acknowledge one another and Dino Babers in a show of good sportsmanship with the thumbs up for David Cutcliffe, who gets the victory, his 73rd as the head coach of the Blue Devils. And Tommy DeVito, unfortunately, has to walk off of this turf here at Ernie Davis Legends Field on crutches and watch his team lose 38-24 to, to the visiting Blue Devils.